Hello and welcome to the Home Assistant Podcast. This is episode 40 and we're talking about 0.84 and joining me today I have Phil as usual. Hey Phil. Hey, how's it going? Good. So in our previous episode, episode 39, I mentioned that 0.84 would be the first release with Lovelace as the default user interface for Home Assistant. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it seems as though the front end team wanted to make lies out of us. Yeah. <laughs> and at the last minute, they've changed their mind. So, States, which is the name of the current user interface, is still the default for Home Assistant. And we actually had a chat with Zach, who is one of the core Lovelace developers, to help us break uh, that all down for this episode. But in the end, there was some pretty big changes that Lovelace was bringing in. So... Hopefully I can say with confidence this time that the next release, 0.85, will have the default user interface for Home Assistant as Lovelace. Uh, And now, as the user interface is kind of important, I think we can all appreciate the developers wanting to be a bit cautious before flicking the switch on this one. Yeah. So a huge shout out to Zach and the front end team who we know are working hard on this one. Yeah, agreed. And speaking of 0.85, I guess we should also just give a little announcement here that this is going to be the last episode for the Home Assistant podcast for 2018. Uh, 0.84 will be the final release of Home Assistant for 2018 as everyone will take a break over the holiday period. I think we're going to be skipping one release. So I think that puts the first uh, 0.85 Home Assistant release about January 9th in 2019 so as as most people know we do follow the uh release schedule as well uh of home assistant so we're going to be taking that same break and we're going to be uh following up as well once the the new uh release comes out well just because lovelace isn't with us as the default user interface yet uh, that doesn't mean there's not any other exciting things happening in Home Assistant. And I think the most exciting for me, at least in 0.84, is cloud webhooks. So Home Assistant cloud subscribers will now have access to cloud webhooks. And with this feature, you'll be given a unique URL, which can be used to send data to your local Home Assistant install. You don't need to set up any port forwarding or even expose your Home Assistant instance to the internet. So that's amazing. I think I can finally take home assistant like off my exposure to the outside world with this yeah no that's great yeah the the last thing i was using uh exposing home assistant for was an ift webhook for the amazon echo so when the timer goes off the lights flash home assistant will know to flash the lights in the house yeah but if there's cloud webhooks now i won't need that instance exposed at all so yeah that's a really good feature yeah, that's right. You can keep everything internal and uh, and then essentially utilize uh, Home Assistant Cloud. So to to yeah get access, like you said, for IFTTT or or, or any of the other uh, anything else that requires external access. And and we've talked about webhooks a couple of times on the show, and and how I think we're pretty much all in agreement that that's definitely the way to go for 2018 and going into yeah. 2019. So yeah, which is great. Also, we have uh, another release for a sensor called Aware or Aware, spelled A W Air, adding support for that uh, for the air sensors there. So those will include temperature, humidity, CO two, and then uh, possibly some other uh, sensors that are dependent on the device. Always good to see another sensor added to Home Assistant. I like getting more information about the home, so that's great. Yep. The U.S. Geological Survey earthquake hazards program feed there you go that's a mouthful (laughs) Uh, this will now add geolocation entities to your home assistant when an earthquake event is tracked by the geological survey so you can set up a radius in home assistant which will then track any earthquakes within that certain distance from your house and you can also set uh, other settings like a minimum magnitude can also be defined as well so, yeah, if there's an earthquake nearby, Home Assistant can now get notified of that and take applicable actions or notify you in some certain way. Yeah, that's awesome. I love I love seeing these kind of sensors, right, within Home Assistant. This, you're yeah. starting to bring safety into this now too, right? So, you know, what, whatever that might mean, you know, turn all the lights red or turn all the lights on possibly if, even yeah, if it's at yeah. night, right? So you can run down to wherever or get safe. So, um yeah, no, that's that's definitely awesome. It's only got to be a matter of time t- for them to add like a, a tornado one as well, because I know a lot of people in Tornado Alley would appreciate something like this as well. For sure, for sure. 
Also, Wonderlist. Uh, if you've ever used that in the past, I have. It's a great list app to build lists and such. I, I use it for to-dos and such. So you can uh, you can now use Home Assistant to consume Wonderlist. So that's cool. And if you're a Qubit Torrent user for downloading things, you can now have a sensor in Home Assistant for that as well. So you can track what your Qubit Torrent is downloading or how much it's downloading as well. Also, we have the Entour Department Departure Information Sensor. Struggling to say that one today. <laughs> uh, so essentially, it's another uh, public transport uh, sensor that says buses are leaving, ferries are leaving, so on and so forth. And that's from Norway, I think. Correct. That is from Norway. So they, I guess, have an open API, which is fantastic. And uh, yeah. There you go. Consuming that now. One that I thought Home Assistant already had, but apparently we didn't, was uh, an integration with Lightwave RF switches and lights. Lightwave RF are pretty popular in the UK, and I, I assume they were just use an, an RF frequency to do remote switches and lights. Uh, but yeah, so that now has an official component in Home Assistant. So I know a lot of users that were using the custom component previously uh, will be happy with this. A couple of breaking changes as well. One of them, again, this one affects me, is uh, a Lutron light component. Just for consistency's sake, uh, changing all the state attributes to be lowercase now. And uh, a breaking change to the system monitor. The since last boot option has been removed. I don't think that will affect uh, if you're using the uptime sensor for Home Assistant itself, but it will affect if you need to know the exact uh, date and time from when the machine was booted. There is another option in System Monitor that you can use that you might be able to extract what you need with a template. Otherwise, I know there's an architecture issue that they're looking at fixing in a future release. Yeah, as well as MQTT lights. If you're defining uh, your MQTT light in your config file, you now need to specify the schema key. So basically that tells uh, Home Assistant whether you're using JSON or you're, whether you're using templates for the lights. And the camera push platform now uses webhooks. So you'll need to post any images to a webhook endpoint. Uh, the camera push endpoints are now removed from Home Assistant. If you use Rain Machine, then there is now support for multiple Rain Machine controllers. So just to reflect that, uh, you'll need to update your config.yaml file, if, especially if you used to, if you intend to use uh, multiple Rain Machine. Uh, controllers. And sadly, another platform that's being removed, this time it's the InstaPush Notify platform. Uh, their service was shut down and we don't have access to that API anymore. So InstaPush Notify has been removed from Home Assistant. Yeah, that's a good reason to to remove a platform if they're not supporting it anymore. <laughs> yeah. Some other, uh, some other noteworthy updates. Now, when you set up Home Assistant, uh, you actually need to have an authentication provider. Before in the past, you didn't need that. Now you need at least one. So the, the idea is to make Home Assistant more secure. You can still use things like trusted networks and so on and so forth. If you, uh, if you want to bypass the login screen, you, you do need that authentication provider now. Just to make the API a bit more secure, I think, as well. Yeah, and, and I'm all for that one. So just, again, in, in terms of security, that's, it's a, definitely a step forward. MQTT components that are now configured with Discovery. So if you have uh, MQTT Discovery on, if you then reconfigure those via MQTT Discovery, they will now uh, get updated in Home Assistant. So previously, if you made changes on the other side, the outer side of Home Assistant, and then you pushed an updated Discovery information to Home Assistant, you might have needed to either restart Home Assistant or restart the other system in order for the two systems to sync what the, the latest update is. So now Home Assistant will detect that reconfiguration of the device and then reload that uh, component or entity in Home Assistant. So that's a great little feature. Mm -hmm. Also, another uh, just kind of noteworthy update is Xiaomi vacuums. Now they have a last clean time. So if you're ever curious when the last time the vacuum was on, now you know. And the Xiaomi vacuums are pretty popular. So I think a lot of people will find use out of that. Yeah, that's great. And and I get, I don't think there's any uh, any update to be done on on your config file. I think it just mm. shows up. All right. And we're going to keep the last episode of 2018 short and sweet with just those release notes. Uh, unless you have anything else you want to add for the year, Rohan? Speak no, now or think... forever hold your peace? <laughs> yeah, that's right. No, I think, uh, I think that should be it for us. It's a nice... Uh quick and easy episode i just want to say thank you to everybody for listening and for following us and for all your questions and all the reviews on itunes as well we really appreciate that too yeah exactly please please you know let us know how we can do better shoot us an email feedback at haspodcast.io yeah have a happy holidays yeah we'll see everyone in the new year that's right cheers everyone 
Take care now. <laughs>